Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? I'd like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Some people would probably balk at this, going to a place where you would have to live underground, live in a way that would be a throwback king... Henry the, uh, well, not Henry, it would have been King Edward, wondered the same thing. Because going to the New World in 1620 was literally going back in time for many, and many perished. Many couldn't handle what they had to deal with. And I'm wondering if we're going to have the Constitution to do what we need to do at some point in the future. Meaning leave and just let this place become what it's going to become. I don't think we'll be alone though. This image that I'm showing you right now was one that I captured from Google Earth Pro down in Antarctica. And on the left, it's very clearly, very clearly a pyramid with its capstone. But what it shows on the right is heat. What it shows is that there might be a civilization already down there. Much like when the pilgrims came to the New World, there was a civilization that was already here. And because of the lack of communications at the time, it was shrouded in mystery. It was said at one time you could a squirrel could get in a tree on the East Coast and not touch the ground all the way to the Mississippi. There were so many trees, and it was so forested. I have no problem believing that. But you would have to wonder if this might be one of the most Christian statements ever made from a man not normally associated with Christianity. The individual has always had to struggle to keep from being overwhelmed by the tribe. If you try it, you'll be lonely often and sometimes frightened, but no price is too high to pay for the privilege of owning yourself. So you'd have to ask the question, if it would have just been easier for Jesus' disciples, why didn't he just tell them to bow? 
Why didn't he just say, you know, believe what you want in your heart, disciples of mine, but outwardly just do what Caesar says. Do what the Pharisees and the Sadducees say. Because you know in your heart what you really believe. Is that what Jesus preached? It's absolutely not what he preached. I'll change my zip code before I change my mind. As I think a lot of Christians will. You know that one image I showed, if it were by itself... You could probably dismiss it, but some time ago we found another image that many could not explain. You see, there was this, what seemed to be, a craft that had crashed, and you could see the line in the snow where it had come in across this ridge. And some people could look at it and go, well, you know, that's just kind of a round rock, and that's from the wind blowing. But strangely enough, when you followed from this image over to the next shadow, we found more light and more heat coming from a place in Antarctica where there is no label. There is no uh, base that anyone is reporting having. And you can see the light leaking out from beneath whatever this is. And I'll give you these coordinates. And you can come here and you can look for yourself. And this image was from as recent as 2013. And the most ironic thing of all of this, I think, is... Uh, see if I can find the proper picture here. Give me one second. is that Antarctica is turning green. There we go. And you have to wonder if this is truly the hand of God. You have to wonder if Antarctica is turning green and temperatures are raising to habitable levels, 65 degrees, the warmest temperature ever recorded, last year, for a reason, for a purpose, that at some point, this might be the last frontier for a Christian culture. Because I don't know how anybody looks at the modern mainstream media, looks at the news, look at what's going on in the world right now, and says that that's what Christians do. I don't know how you see that. I'd like somebody to point out chapter and verse to point out what's going on in the streets, what's going on in the media. Can't find it. Can't find it anywhere. And it's just more evidence of the times we live in. No freedom to choose what a person believed or how he could worship in England. Anyone who objected to the beliefs of the state church or the forms of the church services could be arrested, questioned, and thrown into prison. Sound familiar? That's what's going on now. They're talking about, uh, what's the term, white silence equals violence? Now just being quiet makes you an enemy. Now just being silent makes you a threat. Like I said, I'll change my zip code before I change my mind. Which, when you look in the Bible, there's no uh, command that we defend any piece of land, any specific one, against this. In fact, quite the opposite. It took an event like from the book of Kings to change Pharaoh's mind. Let's hope that's not the eventuality, but I don't know how we avoid it at this point. So I guess I will just leave that there and let folks discuss 
what they plan to do. Like, share, subscribe. In today's video, I have an opportunity to show something in a way that I don't normally have. The Sphinx in Egypt, we can see, we can measure, we can look at, and there are certain facts about it that are undeniable. I have found a Sphinx in Antarctica. It's in high resolution. It is partially buried by the snow, but the head and the forelimbs are visible. I'm going to be able, using Google Earth, the web-based version, and Google Earth Pro, the standalone version, show these two locations side by side with measurements so that you can see for yourself in high resolution that not only are both of these locations literally identical, there is a force unknown protecting the one in Antarctica. Now, let's just deal with the facts real quick. The Great Sphinx spent most of its life in Egypt buried in the sand. 241 feet long, 63 feet wide. That measurement is at the haunches at the rear, not at the front, and that's kind of important. And 66 and a half feet high. Now, unfortunately, neither image do we have in 3D, so we will not be able to measure height. But we will be able to measure the size of the head. We'll be able to measure the length. We'll be able to measure the length of each of the forelimbs and the width at the forelimbs. And when you see the image, I don't know how anyone at this point looking at, at it next to the actual Sphinx will be able to say, no, that's pareidolia or apophenia or whatever else. Also, there has been measurements taken and there are empty chambers of unknown disposition, I guess, below the Sphinx and inside the Sphinx. The one in Antarctica reveals a doorway that there's a pathway to, and there is protection for. So without any further delay, this is the Sphinx in Egypt. Now, what you're looking at here is an image from Google Earth, the web-based version. For our purposes today, this will work just fine. We don't need historical imagery, which is one of the advantages of, on the right, Google Earth Pro, the standalone version. You can also um, look at things in twilight. You can change aspect. It's a much more um, involved tool. But once again, where we're going to be is in the Helma Front Range. If the Antarctic Peninsula is 12 o'clock. This is going to be kind of like 2 o'clock. So let's go there real quick. And I have the location marked out. Now, the problem here is this. The Sphinx in this location is partially still buried. And unless you look at this exactly, exactly the right way, you will never see it. What brought me to this region, and let me max this out real quick, was this artificial looking wall. Now, here on the right, we see a normal rock ridge. On the left, we see another rock ridge, but then this weird line. So I zoomed in closer, and then I saw this strange, I don't know what it was, just stand of rocks and then this path and lo and behold look what it led to now I have the measurements up for both locations the front right paw for lack of a better term I guess on this particular structure and I'll zoom in a little closer is about 24.13 meters long the Sphinx in Egypt is about 25.52 meters long so there is about a one meter difference in length but I want you to look at these shapes closely there is another difference it has to do with the headdress the Sphinx in Egypt seems to have a pentagonal 
headdress. The one, and I have to zoom out to show this, in Antarctica, and I'll go ahead and um, max this out. Let me clear this. Do you see the shadow right here that drops off? This is what you're seeing here. This shadow is the head of the Sphinx, the way the light's hitting it. It has a very different elongated skull shape. Hint, hint. And that's what we're seeing here. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have already said, whoa, wait a minute, what's that? You're right. See, the area in front of this has all been cleared out. And there is a giant path that leads to it. And this is deep snow right here, by the way. And it curls around. There's another structure right here. And it looks like we have an opening that goes right beneath the ice. Now, as you can see, the rear part of the Sphinx here, there's been an avalanche covering the back of it. The 66 foot wide measurement on the Sphinx in Egypt is the rear haunches. So, unfortunately, that is the one thing I can't do. But, do you see this artificial wall? It looks like, and as you can see, there is part of an avalanche over here. They are trying to, whoever did this, protect the front part of this Sphinx from succumbing to an avalanche from this ridge up here. Because as you can see, it would pour right into the front and bury all of this. Now what I can do is I can measure the width at the front paws. And I guess paws, legs, whatever you want to call it. That the reason I say paws is because the feet have a different shape and width than the leg does. The front right leg and front left leg do. So let's just measure that width real quick. About 20 meters or 64 feet. Now, let's measure over here. Here it's about 15.34 meters or 50 feet. So, the width is a little bit wider here, but we might be seeing some extra snow. So we might not be seeing the exact width. So there could be a little bit of play there. Let me clear that out and clear this out. There is about a one and a half meter difference in the length of the front legs. And I'll go ahead and measure that real quick. The Antarctica. Now remember the leg goes all the way back to the rear of the head. Antarctica, 80.72 feet. And as you can see here, you see where the leg ends? Way back here. Sorry about this. Let me start over. Here we go. Okay, 82 feet. About a foot and a half difference. Which on a statue this big or a creation this big, that's nothing. They're virtually identical other than the head. And I think this idea of an elongated skull, we've seen this in Antarctica before. These ancients that had, for some reason, much larger, longer, pointed heads. And we see this on the Sphinx. Now, it's very hard to show this with the camera, but I'm going to try to zoom in and show this. There are tiny, I guess what you would call ventilation holes in this headdress, meaning that it's not solid. And that's what all these little white dots are. So this is a very intricate structure right here. And very close to it, right here, as we can see, 
also buried is some type of a pyramid structure. Now I will of course give you this location for yourself and you can measure it for yourself and look at it and you know tilt the camera around and check historical imagery this avalanche was unfortunate because there's really no other image that shows the whole thing at least not that they're revealing but the fact that we have a path to it a path to a doorway underneath it the head is virtually identical you know what let me go ahead and do that real quick I'll just go ahead and measure the head and measure the one on the Sphinx and then you can make your own judgment now this is kind of a hard measurement to take front to back here it looks like about 43 feet 42.69 feet or in meters about 13 meters let's start new over here now this is a different shaped head it's not as big front to back 32 feet or about about 10 meters and I've also measured this way too it's about 10 meters wide I really really wish that there was a way to measure that rear part because I think that would be the definitive um, measurement to show this but everything else lines up one thing I didn't do or at least I don't remember doing so I'm gonna do it again I am going to measure the width at the pause here one more time 15 meters for this one and that's right this one was a little bigger about 18.9 meters so they're not exact exact but given the scope and the size and the shape I think we can probably say with about 99.5 percent surety that we're looking at two of the same type of structure given everything else that we've seen in Antarctica this would fit now I think the big question here is who constructed this pathway to this open door underneath this Antarctica where does this tunnel go and how did they build this wall that would be my question because if the pathway goes underneath the ice I think we can rule out our government the Chinese government the Russian government we might be looking at another smoking gun piece of evidence that there is an active living civilization under the ice right now in Antarctica and they maybe weren't hampered by the Dark Ages. They might have been hampered a little bit by the ice in the sense that they haven't been able to travel and trade in the normal classical way. But that might have been a good thing in the sense that they haven't been somewhat corrupted by the direction of um, society in general. And I guess I will leave that there because that could open a whole other can of worms about who really controls life on the surface versus who controls life under the ice. And I'll leave that there. I'll zoom this back in just so you can have the final image in as close to the same resolution as I can get it. Like, share, subscribe.
would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tech they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Crimson King. Isn't the land a site off-world?